Hey, hi everyone. Good evening. Hope all of you are able to see my screen and hope all of you can hear me. Can I have a quick confirmation? Team, can I get a quick confirmation? Can you hear me? All right. So today we are going to discuss about Thank you, Ankita. Thanks for the confirmation. So let's discuss about the remaining two domains. I mean to say, so under the SGTM, these are the domains that we would like to discuss. What are them? Special purpose domains. Under that, we have four demographics, comments, subject elements, and subject wizards. All the four were completed. And then we have events. Under the events, we started with adverse, then followed by we completed our medical history and we have also completed our deviation protocol and today it is about disposition as well as clinical events all right so let's discuss about them so before going with that anyone have any questions kindly let me know do any of you have any questions all right so let's talk about the disposition. So this disposition events, right? The disposition is the one which primarily captures the status of the subject. What is that? We are talking about the disposition. Just give me a second, let me copy this. So this domain primarily talks about the status of the subject. So what do you mean by status of the subject? We will discuss now, okay? Just give me a second. Let me do these formalities. Done. Let me also open examples. All right. It's simple if I want to talk about what exactly this disposition domain is all about and what it is going to talk about, I can, I, as I told you just now, it is primarily going to talk about the status of the subject. Meaning, it provides all the information about who and all the subjects enter the study. It also includes Protocol, protocol milestones such as randomization. That is, the protocol milestones are nothing but during this protocol preparation, what and all the various things that we are going to see. So majorly two things comes under this protocol milestones. Number one, ICF, that is informed consent obtained or not. So the first protocol milestone is informed consent obtained. The other one is a randomization done or not. That is a randomization. Then, subjects completion status mean to say there are multiple there are multiple phases in the your treatment, right? Mean to say, uh, you know, all stages of this treatment is subject completed or not. If not, let's say that all the stages is not completed. In that particular case, we are going to mention the reasons about where and all the subject haven't completed. Meaning, let's say we have phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. All the four phases are completed. Subject is part of all the four phases, but the subject is not part of the follow up. When we made a follow up, the subject is not responded. Now I can say that it is not completed because the follow up is incomplete. So what is the status? Where exactly the subject is not completed the status? For an example, you have got your, uh, what is the informed consent form. You also done the randomization. Let's say you're doing the screening. One of the screening subject is denied. Can I say this is a protocol violation? Then I can say the subject is dropout. So the subject is not completed the treatment. So it is going to talk about who enters into the study, the protocol milestones, subject completion status. By any reason, if the subject is discontinued, right, then we need to also give the reason for that particular one. 
The subject may discontinue for the entire study, that is in the screening phase itself, he drop out. Or he entered into the phase one from the phase two, he got exit. Or any segment of the study, which includes your post treatment follow up as well. In a simple way, if someone want to ask about what exactly it is going to be in simple terms, right? Instead of talking all this, if I want to talk, talk in a very simple terms, it is going to capture subject or uh, capture status of the subject. Simple. It captures the status of the subject as simple as that. Then it completely depends on the sponsor about which disposition events and milestones he want to submit for the study. I'll tell you what, what exactly I'm talking about here because it may look different to you, right? Meaning, meaning, sponsor is the one who is going to decide what and all the different disposition events and milestones he want to subject, he want to submit in the study. Here is the example. See this? Here, from here to here, we will discuss in detail. I'm just giving you some heads up here, okay? This is the another guy. Then we have one more person here. And here, 104. Because I'm just going with multiple subjects just to make sure how each of them are different. In this case, if you see, there are five events we have mentioned for the subject 101. What are they? Informed consent we have taken. Right, the screening is completed, randomization is completed, treatment is completed, follow up also done. Mean to say, this subject is having all the events right from informed consent, randomization, screening, treatment, and follow up. All of them go to the second one here. This guy. He is denied to go with the MRA procedure, which is a protocol violation. It happened during the screening. So he's a dropout, only two stages. So here, the sponsor want to go in detail and he want to mention all the events. Go to the other one. Here you can see, the sponsor don't want to give the, all the phases, all the approach details. He simply want to give what is the status. Can you see this one? Each one is different here. This guy, he simply mentioned whether the total status is completed or not. Done. Second guy, 102. Unlike the previous one, here he want to make sure that his subject is denied or subject taking the study medication erotically, right? So there is a deviation. Again, the protocol violation has come to the picture. So he is a dropout. Third one, he is not part of the follow up. Again, he is not completed the study. So here, if you go to this, we have clear details about because the completed status is the fifth event. So we have given all the event details, all the milestone details. But here, sponsor is not interested to give all the details. So simply, he just have mentioned what is going to be the status. So it is completely a sponsor related one. So what events he want to submit to the study? Is that clear, guys? In a nutshell, what exactly it is going to talk about? Can I have a quick confirmation from everyone? In a nutshell, what it is? Yes or no, guys? Perfect. So again, it is going to be a very simple one. It won't take time. So most of them are known to us. So simply we will proceed with this particular one. Okay. So as usual, we have the habit of writing all the, uh, we will start with what is going to be the uh, nature of this particular one. Correct. After that, we are going to talk about how we are going to store the data here. Correct. And then we will talk about um, 
some few few of the examples we can see just like the Excel that I have shown. And also we are going to talk about your um, what is that topic variable, what is going to be your identifier variables, all these details we are going to discuss. So here is what your disposition domain. You can see that here. So you are going to have the details, all the details, right? Categorization. Uh, guys, I forgot to tell this to you, to all of you. Whenever we complete one of the domain, go to your, uh, I can say, um, STDM implementation guide. And in the STDM implementation guide, try to read all the products. 90% of the times I'm giving you all the details, 90% of the times, okay? But still, just try to read them, okay? Everyone of you are clear? Right. So what is the first thing that we are going to do? We are going to start writing about, maybe from the beginning we can take, not this. Yesterday we have completed which one? Protocol deviation. Let's take from here, okay. So first we are going to talk about what is the nature. So every time we are going to write about this. So let's write about what is the nature of this particular one. Uh, what is the nature? One regard per, there are two things that we are going to do here. Either it is going to be a protocol milestone. I'll tell you the difference first. That is one regard per protocol milestone or disposition event. What is that? What I'm talking about here? One regard per protocol milestone R, it is going to be a disposition event. So what exactly it is called? What do you mean by protocol milestones? Right? We need to understand this, right? So the general protocol milestones are, it can be informed consent. The person who is going to sign the consent, right? So the informed cons consent obtained or not. That is one of the milestone. Randomization completed or not. That is randomized is completed or not. These two are generally considered as your protocol milestones. When it comes to the disposition events, the disposition events are going to be, right? So first one, screening. Meaning, if at all screen failure happens, the screen failure information. Right, the very first thing is going to be screening. After that, treatment, multiple phases of your treatment. Then, are there any adverse event happens? If yes, you are going to record them as well. And then, is the study completed or not? So the completed status. Due to any of the serious event, if the person, the subject is died, the death status. All these are part of your disposition events. There are some other events as well. For an example, because of some reason, you changed the blinding. You, you moved from single blinded to unblinded or unblinded to double blinded, right? So that is called your blind status change. That also we are going to capture. So just you need to understand this particular one under the nature. We either we are going to capture your protocol milestone or disposition events. So what exactly it is if someone asks you, the protocol events are nothing but informed consent that you have obtained, screening, adverse events, study completed and death are also under your disposition events. And finally, under the other events, you are going to have your blinding status change blinding status change is that clear guys what we are going to have under what everyone of you are clear clear in this particular one right so we start with the what is going to be the nature done then we will go ahead with topic variables uh, as usual the topic variable is going to be since it is going to be about the events the term is going to be there it is going to be ds term this is nothing but name of the disposition event or the protocol or the protocol milestone. What exactly it is, we are going to discuss in detail. Under again, under the identifier variables, we have the study identifier, we have the domain abbreviation, which is nothing but the DS, 
unique subject identifier, which is also going to be the common one, which is going to be a concatenation of three variables, which are nothing but your study ID, site ID, and the subject ID. Right? Now, the next thing that we are going to talk here is what are the other variables? Can you see that identifier? Study ID is done, domain is done, unique subject identifier is done. Then the next thing is going to be a DS sequence. Again, what is DS sequence? Just like other one, it is going to be a, a sequence number, right? Any numeric number, but it must be unique at the subject level within the domain. So for each subject, we are going to write this particular one, correct? So here you can see the same one, I can use it, DS sequence right then so the other identifier variable here is going to be group id uh, where we have defined the group id do any of you remember this do any of you remember this ds group id do you remember this if you go to your adverse events domain you can identify this it is the group ID which is given to the group of events, right? You can see here, it will be called it as AEGRP ID. See this? It is a group ID used to tie together a block of related records. The same thing I can use here as well. You can ask me, Murli, what exactly it is? Can you give me an example? Yes, we do have the example for that. I can show you in your adverse events. Anyways, similar terms, right? Let's see that. Can you see this? In this, under this, you can see the group ID. All the vomiting, we have given one. People who are suffering with diarrhea, we have given two. Nausea, it is only once if the event happened, so we haven't given any group ID. So, the similar events we are grouping them with some group id yeah the same thing will be happened here as well for the related items we can give the same group id this is also going to be a identifier variable the next thing is going to be reference id this is part of your ae this is part of your dv correct so which is nothing but simply a reference id what exactly it is going to deal with the reference id is the one it is a internal or external identifier. If you want to have the example for this, you can have the same example here as well. Let me show you. Somewhere I remember I have given some reference ID. Maybe not here. Let's see, maybe in another uh, one, maybe medical history, there we may have it. I'll show you, don't worry. I'll show you, don't worry, right? So it is all about a reference ID that we have given, right? Even this reference ID is going to be a line number from your CRER, uh, what is a case report form. Even that you can consider, nothing wrong in that. Nothing wrong in that, all right? Now. The next thing is going to be, these are your identifier variables. There is one last thing that is nothing but your sponsor defined one. Maybe I can copy this one as well. Remember guys, if you are good with one domain under your events, all the other domains will be having more or less similar variables, correct? So this, this is nothing but your sponsor defined identifier. It is printed on your CRF as an identifier, or it is also part of your sponsor's operational database. It is part of your AE, it is part of your, it is part of your disposition domain, it is part of your, uh, what is the uh, protocol deviation domain, and it is part of your adverse event domain. You can see here, AE, SPID, correct? So it is part of almost all the domains. That is all the events domains. That's what I would like to say. With this, I can say that we are good with all the identifier domains. So identifier variables. Right? So let's start with our topic variable, which is nothing but the DS term. 
Thanks. I'm going a little faster. Any of you feel like, hey, you're going fast, Murli, slow down means I'll slow down. Okay. Since these are going to be easy ones, I'm just going ahead with that. Little higher speeds. Not too much, a little one. Okay. Right. So again, here I can say that this is DS term is nothing but a name of the disposition event. It is nothing but the name of the disposition. A simple one, I can say that it is the name of the disposition event. Correct? A simple one. So you can see here, I'll simply go with this one is DS. This one is going to be DS, DS SEQ, DS term. Now we need to talk about what are going to be the names of your disposition events. We can take the example from here. Can you see this? Inform consent update. Ah, or I can also, sorry guys, I also need to mention this. Or a protocol milestone. Either it is going to be a name of the disposition event or the protocol milestone. Okay. What and all I can have here? Either I can say that, hey, informed consent is obtained. It is a protocol milestone. Randomization is completed. Again, it is also a, it is also a, your protocol milestone only. Now go with the third one. This is something like, Completed. What exactly completed? The screening is completed. The DS term is going to tell you what is going to be the various values that we are going to store here. You can see this. A reported term for the disposition event. Okay. This is whatever is there in your milestone or whatever the name of the event, exact name as these will be mentioned here. Again. The DS term values will map to the control terminology and stored in PSD code. The same thing is, as usual, it is going to follow. So what is DSD code then? Now we are going to talk about it. So one by one, in the same order, we are going to do standardized disposition term. It is not from the medical dictionary. It is from the standardized your disposition term. What do you mean by standardized? What I'm going to have there? So the controlled terminologies are going to be only two there. Can you see this? There are much, there are informed consent of time completed, randomized, most of them like standard names. So you can see here automobile accident. You call it as it is. Right? Just a second, guys. Then you have something called anemia, which is the adverse event, right? Which is unforeseen event, right? You are calling it as an adverse event, right? Subject is moved at what stage? Treatment stage. So loss to follow up. Subject denied for the MRI procedure, which is a protocol violation. Can you understand, right? What I'm trying to say here. It is all about the standard term. This is not from the medical dictionary. It is the standard, I can say that, um, standardized event names. So here we have various things, a detailed one. If you standardize it, what is going to be happen? What are the terms that you are going to get? Those will be your DS decode. So all I'm going to have here is going to be, these are the standardized disposition terms, standardized one. Okay, now the next thing is going to be, maybe if someone asks you for the examples, the examples are going to be, you can use all of this, when it is, all this. Maybe we can take some of them as well. Informed consent, we can take completed randomized adverse event. These four you can take. Maybe the death. These are all the examples, correct? Death, informed consent obtained, completed, your yeah, randomization is done, adverse event, all these are going to be a standardized term for your disposition terms. Okay? Then, so the DSD code is also done. Let's go with the next one. Category. 
DS category is nothing but we have AE category, we have DV category, right? Similarly, we have here DS category. What is that? Category of your, this is going to be category of your, uh, what is exactly it is going to be? Disposition event or the protocol milestone. Simply we can put disposition event. What category it is? Am I correct or not? What category it is? Right. Ah, what is going to be the next one? You are going to have the subcategory of that. Correct? Just use it as subcategory. Which is nothing but the further classification or further categorization of your disposition event. Right? Simple ones only, guys. Whatever we have there. I'm just wondering, do you have uh yeah, DS subcategory is also there, right? So we are not going too hard. All we are doing is what are the various variables are there, right? What is the name of that particular label of that particular variable? And followed by we are just going to talk about what exactly it is displayed there. Correct? So far, all of you are cool. We are not going anything hard. We are, we are going on a very lighter note and we are simply explaining this. So the next one is going to be approach. Now, what is going to be the approach? Now, what is approach, guys? Someone? What is approach? Event. No, no, no. Approach is not the event, Swati. No. Approach is not the event. Grouping of the events is called people. Grouping of the each phase element. Each phase, yes, group mm -hmm. of elements, or I can say that each phase of the study. Can I call that? Right? For an example, if someone asks you, what are the examples? What is the approach examples? It can be screening, it can be treatment. It can be follow up. Am I correct or not? Each stage, I can call it as your approach. Most important thing that you need to understand is if you go to this particular one, approach is blank somewhere. Can you see this? What is the meaning of this? Where it is blank? Can someone please check and tell me? Wherever your category is going to be a protocol milestone. For protocol milestones, a poach is going to be now. Remember this. What is that? We won't capture, we won't capture a poach if the category is R. I can say that if the uh, if position event is fall fall under or we won't capture approach for protocol deviations simple what is that we won't capture approach for the protocol milestones and populate as null our approach is null for these events. Very important. Why? We don't need to because whether it is what is going to be the approach or in which stage it is, we don't mention that for your protocol milestones. That is the only thing that you need to understand. Is that clear, guys? For protocol milestones, we won't represent this. You can see this here clear. Wherever it is going to be a protocol milestone, there and all. We are not mentioning that. We are not going to write what is going to be the approach for this. This is the only thing that you need to remember. Clear? Right. So what else is pending? Just three of your time periods are pending. What are going to be? Your DS, DTC. That is nothing but your date and time of your collection. What is this? DS collection date meaning what exactly you're going to from where we are going to do this we will populate this field 
from or we'll populate this particular field which is nothing but the date all right from CRF it is populated it is part of your CRF right so simply what it is going to talk about it will talk about when your disposition details are collected as simply as that when it is collected remember it is going to be in a character format and it is going to be a it is a character value and the format is going to be what is the format guys is 8601 am i correct clear to everyone is this understandable so we have calculated ae dtc we have calculated mh dtc we calculated dv dtc now we are calculating ds dtc right all of them are going to be similar right then what is the next thing ds sdtc sorry i placed you on mute okay now so you can see that the next one is going to be here dssdtc what is this start date simply that is start date and time what is this start date and time in character format am i correct that is what you are going to do it that is nothing but what is the start date and time of disposition event. If you want to talk about it, you can say that it is going to be start at date and time of disposition event in character format. Again, same we are going to talk about 86 IS 8610 IS 8601DA. That is still there. Correct. So one last variable that we are going to discuss here. Uh, this is start date, right? We can also go with the end date. The end date is going to be end date and time. That's it. And last variable here is study day. Everywhere we are going to calculate the study day, right? So, study day. How to calculate this, guys? You can simply say study start date also. And it is going to be a derived variable. Maybe I can copy the data from here. This one. Guys, we haven't calculated this. No problem. Medical history, we did. Yes. Now ah, we can do this. Take this particular one and we can use the same here just to save some time. It's a derived variable. What are the variables we are going to do here? There are two variables we are going to take here. What are the two variables? This is the one. Correct? Rest are all going to be the same. Correct? So when your disposition start at date and time is greater than your is greater than your RFSTDD, that is reference start date, treatment start date. This is going to be the formula, else, this is going to be the formula. Right? So these are nothing but all the variables which fall under the uh, disposition domain. Let's have a quick recap. So what and all we discussed here. It primarily talks about the subject status. That is, who entered into my study? What are my protocol milestones? What is the subject's completion status? Is the subject completed the study or not? If he, is not, he or she is not completed, what are the reasons for that? If, if he or she discontinued from the study, where exactly they, they discontinued? In what phase? In what segment of the study? All these are going to be part of it. Right? Sponsor is the one who is going to decide what disposition events he want to show to the show in the study. Completely, it's a sponsor's call. What is the nature? One record, 
पर डिस्पोजिशन इवेंट है और प्रोटोकॉल माइलस्टोन पर सब्जेक्ट वट आर वॉट यू मीन बाई प्रोटोकॉल माइल स्टोन वट आर द जनरल प्रोटोकॉल माइल स्टोन इनफॉर्म कंसेंट अपटेन रैंडमाइज वट आर द डिस्पोजिशन इवेंट स्क्रीनिंग ट्रीटमेंट एडवर्स इवेंट स्टडी कंप्लीटेड एंड डेथ ऑल दीज आर पार्ट ऑफ या डिस्पोजिशन इवेंट्स वट आर द अदर इवेंट्स ब्लाइंडिंग स्टेटस चेंज आर देर एनी चेंजेस इन द ब्लाइंडिंग इवेंट्स वट इज द स्टडी द ब्लाइंडिंग स्टेटस चेंज वट इज द टॉपिक वेरिएबल disposition term what are the identifier variables there are five identifier variables up to this up to this are the identifier variables so what are they so we have domain we have study id unit subject id the sequence number group id a reference id and sponsor id defined identifier then ds term the name ds code so this is going to be the normal name that is nothing but a kind of a free text but if you standardize this that is nothing but your dsv code remember it is not from the medical dictionary it is the standardized disposition terms then what category the particular disposition event falls under if you further want to categorize it sub categorize it what it is in what phase of the study oh, this is the phase of the study that is nothing but your approach right approach will not be captured for the protocol milestones it is null when the disposition events are collected disposition collection date start date and time of disposition event the start date and time in character format end date and time in character format which is nothing but your nddc then study start date how do you calculate it there are two variables your start date and time and your reference start date and time this will be coming from your demographics domain if you combine these two that is you can use these two for deriving your disposition study simple and straightforward any questions in this so here are going to be the examples we already discussed the examples here correct so if the sponsor want to go in a clear manner i can go like this If the sponsor want to give only one record directly with the final status, he want to give in that particular case, I can go with the second one. So as I mentioned already, it's purely a sponsor call. Any questions here, guys? Anyone have any questions in this? Let me know. All of you are comfortable. Questions. any questions all right so now i'm just going ahead with the next one which is nothing but your clinical events that is one i'm going to discuss now so before i go with the clinical events if any of you have any questions let me know if not i'll proceed with this just a second i can take this one from here clinical events this is the one okay. so let's proceed with this uh, another simple one right uh, people some someone might be get confused about the difference between your adverse events and the clinical events right adverse events and clinical events adverse events is nothing but the unforeseen events right we haven't expect them right something which is not part of which is not supposed to be part of your study but it has happened those are your adverse events correct so this particular domain here clinical events it is going to capture clinical events those are not classified as adverse events remember this clinical events will not be considered or will not be uh, or no none of your adverse events will be part of your clinical event that is going to be a minor change at that minor change we need to understand all right a very simple one it is not going to be a, a difficult one at all a simple easy but you just need to follow this properly that's it all right this domain primarily captures the clinical events 
If someone asks you, what do you mean by clinical events? I can simply say that clinical events are nothing but symptoms and side effects. That's it. Okay, Raja. If DTDC is character variable, the format is 8601, but it is a numeric format. No, 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 no. Uh, remember, so give me a second. Just a second. Hey, Raja, sorry, uh, I got a call, so I just place you on mute. Remember, Raja, not just this particular domain. In STD, completely or across all the domains, your dates are completely in character format only. Right? First thing, date is not a numeric at all here. All the dates are represented as a character format in your SDT in the mind. This I have mentioned in the start of the class also. That is your initial discussions also. Second, I'm simply mentioning IS8601, but ideally speaking, either it is going to be 8601DA or it is going to be 8601DT. DA means normal date, that is 2022-0570. This is the format, right? Hmm? Then, DT means date and time, which is nothing but a timestamp. In that particular case, you are going to represent like this, followed by T, then now it is 920. So it is going to be 21, 20, 26. That is the difference. DA means just you are representing the date. DT means you are representing both date and time. Every time, instead of mentioning DA and DT, we are simply mentioning IS8601. That's it. That means it can be in a date format or it can be in a timestamp format. Is that clear, uh, Raja? Did you get it? Any questions? Can I have a quick confirmation? All of you are able to understand this? Right. Perfect. Now, let's go with the next to the mind, which is going to be a clinical, sorry, clinical events to mind. That is CE, clinical events to mind. Okay, so let's discuss about it. Again, a very simple one. It won't be take any time. So quickly, we can complete this as well. I can simply say, clinical events all right so what exactly it will deals with what do you mean by clinical events i can simply say that this domain captures the clinical events so what do you mean by clinical events i can say the clinical events are nothing but symptoms and side effects Simply, in a, in a nutshell, if you want to talk about it, it is going to be a, it is the mind captures the clinical events, which is nothing but symptoms and side effects. But that would not be, or that would not be classified as adverse events. Remember this. That should not be considered as the adverse events, right? No adverse event should be part of this, as simple as that. That is the only thing. Okay, if someone asks you, hey Murli, can you give me some examples? Can you give me some examples? Right? For an example, it's a headache. The headache is going to be your term. You're not expecting this because of your there is nothing but whatever the drug that you are giving, the drug shouldn't lead to the headache. Because of that particular drug, you are not supposed to get headache, but the subject experienced it. The subject is suffered with headache. 
then it is the adverse event correct right? similarly let's say that there is a another thing let's say vomit vomit is an expected is an expected thing because whatever the study work that we are giving the study work may have this particular side effect this is the side effect that we are expecting this is the pretty common side effect for this particular clinical event so for this particular study drug so it is going to be a symptom similarly a ah, wonderful uh, let's say a fever five month very good example so we are not ex we are expecting fever after your covid dosage right you just went with the covid vaccine so one of the common symptoms for after your thing is going to be you may experience fever not everyone but this is one of the side effect right so you are using metformin because of the metformin you may feel body rashes itching itching is part of your ceta why because this particular metformin that we are using this may cause your side effect right clear uh, there is another one adverse event example clotting after covid vaccine yeah it is not expected but you are getting yes yes uh, maybe uh, i think mohan i can write this one this is a, a really a really good one let's say covid vaccine if you take covid vaccine then fever is going to be the zeta then a clotting happened the clotting can be considered as your adverse event because the first one is expected this is the symptom or this is going to be the side effect of your covid vaccine fever you may expect right but the clotting is not expected one if you get it it is going to be a yeta diarrhea right or vomiting sensation even vomiting for for your uh, covid vaccine is is not expected one it is going to be a yeta body pains right so body pains are going to be expected one for this particular vaccine right this is going to be a Later. Make sense to everyone now. What is called your clinical event? What is going to be your adverse event? Something you are expecting that may be the symptom or side effect of your drug or vaccine or treatment. That is going to be a clinical event. Something which is not supposed to be a side effect or symptom of this particular study drug or treatment, but you are experiencing it. That is going to be adverse event. All of you are clear with this? Can I have a quick confirmation, guys? Mohanty, thank you. Very good example. Simple and easy to understand. Anyone? Any questions here? Can I proceed? Right. So as usual, we are going to write the nature, all this. So let's go ahead with that. So what is going to be the nature of this particular one? Oh. So the nature of this particular divine is going to be. it is going to capture here it is one record per event per subject one record per subject one record per clinical event if you want to have a clear idea per clinical event per subject that is the nature uh, what is the next thing we are going to talk about we are going to talk about the topic variable what are going to be the topic variable uh, what is the topic variable guys by this time all of you might understand this the topic variable is nothing but here here it is going to be a e term here it is going to be b e clinical event term right we also discuss about your study identifiers right so identifier variables right so what are going to be your identifier variables my identifier variables are going to be as usual you are going to get your study identifier domain unique subject identifier these three will come along with your sequence along with your a e term so a e term will not come sorry about that you are going to have your study identifier domain abbreviation will be there unique subject identifier is there and what next 
PEQ your sequence number, the sequence number is going to be within the domain. Correct? Uh, what is the next variable? The group ID. Maybe I can copy this from this position. Because just now we discussed, right? Up to this. Same thing will be copied here. So what are the other things? I'm going to have CE group ID. That is nothing but group ID that we have given for the related events, the reference ID, and sponsor identifier, sponsor defined variable. Up to this, all of them are going to be the same. Can you see this? All these are identifier variables, right? Then we are going to talk about the CE term. What is nothing but a CE term? That also I can copy from here. This is nothing but name of the clinical event. Right? So reported term for the clinical event. So I can simply put C here. So C, 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 and this is going to be a C term. Can someone give me the some examples for what are going to be our P A terms? Here are a few of the examples, but still, if you want to go ahead with this, at the down, you can see a few. You can see rash. Maybe I can copy here. You can see reason. Let's say diarrhea. Can I say these are going to be the different name of your clinical event terms, right? Guys, the only reason I'm just feeding up here because these are all repeated. Purely repeated. That's the reason I'm going on a little higher place. Okay? Nothing beyond that. Anywhere, if any of you feel that Murli just slow down means I'll slow down. Okay. All right. And here there is something we, we can do here is this one will go ahead with your control terminology. Correct? So the CE term will lead you to the CE decode. Same stuff. So what is your CE decode again? This is dictionary derived one. These are not the standardized ones. These are the standardized one, but which these are coming from the dictionary derived codes. So these are similar to your adverse event. Here you can find it. Just give me a second. AE decode. What happened? Here it is. So this is a dictionary derived term, right? So we can go ahead with like this. So your AE term followed by what is going to be a AE decode. This is going to be a, a dictionary derived code, correct? So what is going to be the dictionary that we are going to follow? We are going to follow MED DRA. Uh, can someone tell me what is going to be our MED DRA dictionary version? Last class I have mentioned it. 22.1. Perfect. Kote Reddy and Mohanty. Yeah, perfect. All right. Hmm. What is the next thing that we can discuss here? CE category. Hmm. What is CE category? Category of your clinical event, the same stuff. Correct. So if you want the examples again here, you can pick it up from here. Use it to define a category. Further, if I want to categorize this, I can go ahead with the C. Am I correct? Same stuff, just domain name change. The abbreviation is going to change. But the rest of them are going to be the same. Right. Uh, what is going to be C PRESP? Pre specified. This is nothing but a pre specified thing. Where I can see this particular one, it is part of almost all your domains. Correct? So pre specified events. You can see this. So what is pre specified clinical events? These are already specified or not? This drug may cause this particular one or not. All right. Then, if it is why, then this particular clinical event was already pre specified in your DRF. Same stuff will be keep on repeating. 
all right so what is the next one c akka remember this where you have seen the c akka is this again happens or not the occurrence is there or not it is part of your adverse event it is also part of your medical history also correct so let's copy from here what happened don't we have occurrence here just a second let me open medical history it's supposed to be what we are missing just give me a moment guys I remember we discussed this. That's the reason I'm with Aries occurrence. All right. Here we have discussed this. Just give me a second. Substances. Hmm. It should be there. Yes, we CM. We are under the CM now. Hmm. Might be a miss something. Just a second. Ah, here it is. That's what in medical history it is there. Right? We discussed this just two days before. But why it is not part of the notes? It's supposed to be there, right? MHR. I searched with E occur. Correct? I searched with E Akka, but still it should be there. Why we haven't discussed this? Oh, I haven't write this here, but I remember I explained this. Ah, here it is. I remember this, but still it is not part of our notes. That's the reason we missed it because I strongly remember that we have discussed this two days back. Here it is. In the medical history, we define whether it is going to be pre-specified or not, whether the occurrence is there or not. You can see the same events repeated for two patients here, correct? And when you check this particular one, you can see the transient isometric attack the occurrence is there for this particular subject and same it is not there for the second subject right i remember explaining this particular example that's the reason i'm 200 percent sure about this particular one but somehow it is not part of our uh, what to say domain the domain knows maybe i'll update this i'll update this okay right i supposed to update this but i missed it i'll update it here no problem so we are talking about CE occurrence. So from here, we'll discuss tomorrow, guys. Anyways, I just got the break. Yeah, I removed, I did discuss, but it is not part of your notes. No problem. So from here, we discuss tomorrow. So we just got some deviation, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten more variables are there. So all these ten variables we discuss tomorrow. So I can say that by tomorrow, we can complete our events.
so we complete this and we tomorrow we proceed with the interventions we go with ex and ex ec that is exposure and exposure as connected let's target these three by tomorrow or let's complete this and go with the ae coding tomorrow we go with ae coding all right so 10 more variables some deviation so let's stop here and discuss this by tomorrow all right so tomorrow i'll share the notes for your clinical events i'll share the notes for the disposition now and for the clinical events i'll share it by tomorrow right maybe i can quickly share right now so disposition example class notes and it's done all right let me update it in the art drive as well so that you can also download from there right that's all for today guys let's connect by tomorrow and complete it take care see you tomorrow bye everyone